What are the top three things you need to do to succeed in sales? Number one, you've got to have a growth mindset. You've got to have the work ethic to, you know, be able to take rejection. You've got to be able to, to learn to hear no and, and be able to move forward and continue to grow. The second thing that you need is high EQ, right? You need empathy. You need curiosity. You need to be able to ask really good questions and problem solve with people. And then the third is coming from one of my favorite quotes. The third thing that you need is, is a really good system, right? Losers have goals. Winners have systems. So you need a process that you can be able to follow repeatedly every single day and every single week so that you know what your results are going to be and you're not guessing or, or hoping for them. Welcome to AI Nerd AI with Attitude. Today, I'm going to be with Tom Alemo. I know, he'll explain his name in a minute. But he is a podcast host of Millennial Sales, where they focus on helping younger professionals sell better. Tom, I love your name, your first name at least. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's always good to chop it up with another Tom, or a Thomas that is, and excited to be here, man. You, you know, when I was your age, uh, I think you said you were 28, uh, I was a Tom or Tommy at that I may have gone just from Tommy to Tom, back to Tom. And I went to Thomas because I was trying to be as pretentious as possible to offset my charming personality. So do what you will with your name that, as you keep it. That, that's what I can look forward to. I, I used to go by T growing up because I'm, I'm actually the third. And so that was the way that I, I differentiated. But then once I got into the business world, you know, my boss didn't really seemed to want to call me by one letter. So I had to more formalize it to Tom. And then at some point when I can grow facial hair like you, I'll switch to Thomas. <laughs> Rogaine, just rubbing it. I didn't grow it till my 40s, just to be fair. This is like months worth of work. I will tell you though, um, <laughs> this is nothing, this is why not. My son is the third Thomas as well. And we actually were born on the first same day and I call him T and he loves it. But I, instead of going, you know, I would tell you, go to Thomas right away because that will give you the profession you're looking for or go to a symbol like Prince. Just Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> It's nice to meet you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You do, you know, where you're, where you live, where you're calling in from. How does it live? You know, how does it feel to live in your mom's basement? Just, just go ahead. Keep going. your intro time. Yeah, go ahead. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm I'm a Boston native, living in Chicago right now, as of ten days ago. Excited to be in the new city. By day, I work in tech sales. I I'm a salesperson at a company called Gong Startup. Uh, and then by early mornings, evenings, and weekends, I run the Millennial Sales blog and podcast. And I've been doing that for the last five or so years with really my mission is, is trying to help young salespeople succeed in their careers. So I keep myself busy. You have a YouTube channel you started up as well. If I remember, I think I subscribed to it. Yeah, yeah I, I, I appreciate the numbers. Yeah, you can, if anyone's interested following the conversation, I'm Tommy Tahoe on YouTube. So you can check out all the podcasts and, and shorts there. See, there it is. You're back to Tommy. Tommy Tahoe here, yeah. coming live from Chicago. So what, what's the passion behind helping young sales professionals? Like, what's the what's the driver of that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think about half the people that graduate school every year get into some form of sales. And most people at some form in their life get into sales, whether it's even, you know, being a waiter or a waitress or getting into real estate or, or tech or whatever it might be. And sales is a really, really challenging career. There's a ton of rejection. There's a lot of pressure, but it can absolutely change your life. And so my whole purpose was, you know, it changed my life both financially, uh, with my confidence, with just different opportunities. And I wanted to pay it forward. And I see a lot of folks that get in, you know, fresh out of college, struggling, you know, working the 80 hour weeks, getting really stressed, having bad mental health, whatever it might be. And so the whole purpose is, is trying to help people to work smarter, find better tactics to, to get involved with, learn the right mindset that you need to be successful and hopefully get in a position where they can have a really successful career and, you know, uh, start a really, you know, powerful career journey. So I just, I see it as a profession that you can and really like an entrepreneur, you can really dictate your own success very literally by how well you do is, is how much money you'll you'll likely earn. And so there's a lot of power to that for people that come from you know various backgrounds. And there's all types of salespeople in the world, right? So I'm, I'm personally a horrible salesperson because I don't do, I'm just terrible at process. So the, the a good salesperson, in my opinion, is somebody who knows how to follow the process, the drips, the CRM, the outreach, 
and does it very methodically and also has a personality that's not salesy. <laughs> so totally. it's, it's finding that balance between, you know, execution versus personality and relatability in the same person is very difficult. I, I, I'd like, maybe, I'd love your opinion. Not every salesperson is, you know, the old, the, the, I think the quintessential is outgoing, probably more gregarious, more like yourself, myself, maybe. But I think some of the best salespeople I've seen are the ones who can really just execute the rhythm and methodical outreach and the path of sales. What do you see in your perspective as, as a really good salesperson and maybe relate that to the generation you're focusing on helping? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think when most people think about, it's interesting you talk about processes because I think if you were to talk to a random person on the street about a salesperson, they probably think of, you know, the person with slick back hair at a used car <laughs> dealership that's wearing, you know, a fake Rolex and a, a slick talker. Yeah, but they make those? They make, they make it, fake Rolexes? Probably, Rolex probably doesn't, but someone does, I'm sure. I could probably hook you up with a link after the show. Right. But but I think, you know, the best salespeople that I've ever met, you know, they're all different. They all have their own style. So there are some folks that are super outgoing and, and fast talkers, and that's how they do it. I know some folks that are major introverts, right? But they ask amazing questions and they have a high EQ and, you know, can really listen well and, and problem solve. There's folks that have dialed in systems that that's how their brain works. There's other folks that are insanely creative and they come up with these amazing campaigns that, you know, blow people's minds and, and really can kind of break down the door. So I feel like the most important thing when you're when you're getting into sales is kind of understanding, you know, being self-aware of, of what your strengths and weaknesses are and trying to really dial into what those strengths are. And it's just like if you were, you know, you're speaking, you're you're running a podcast or if you're writing, you're going to try to mimic people at first. I'm sure you might mimic, you know, really you know, talented interviewers that you see like, you know, Oprah or Joe Rogan or whomever, but then you found your own voice. And so I think once you find who your authentic kind of salesperson can be, that's when your results can absolutely explode. Well, you know, that sets up my top three questions. So, you know, if, if you're a younger person for the all 12 of them that are watching this right now, what are the top three things you need to do to succeed in sales? Number one, you've got to have a growth mindset. You've got to have the work ethic to, you know, be able to take rejection. You've got to be able to, to learn to hear no and, and be able to move forward and continue to grow. The second thing that you need is high EQ, right? You need empathy. You need curiosity. You need to be able to ask really good questions and problem solve with people. And then the third is coming from one of my favorite quotes. The third thing that you need is, is a really good system, right? Losers have goals. Winners have systems. So you need a process that you can be able to follow repeatedly every single day and every single week so that you know what your results are gonna be and you're not guessing or, or hoping for them. What's one thing you should always do in sales? One thing you should never do in sales? One thing that you should always do in sales is, is stay curious, right? And what I mean by that is you're asking more questions than what you're speaking. You're talking less than 50% of the time and you take your commission that you might earn from this sale completely out of your mind and you stay in the moment and you ask curious questions. The thing that you don't do is you don't pitch slap someone. And what do I mean by that? There's this phenomenon on LinkedIn where people will connect with you uh. and then 17 seconds later, will send you a six paragraph email about their lead generation services. Please do not do that if you're doing that. You should deactivate wow. your LinkedIn right now and go to therapy and then come back. Right. Unless it's a fake account. I cannot stand that. So I, I will connect to people usually if I can read their connection request in one line. Um, and I connect with a lot of people, but I'm with you. But if if your next email, if you haven't even met me or did, and is it's a link to some shit and it's two, three paragraphs on something, I don't care if you were literally saying, I'm going to give you a million dollars and here's actually where it's located. I won't read it. <laughs> like if I can't read it on mobile quickly or get me interested, it's over. So you have one line to figure it out. 100%. Um, agree with you. I understand you're a recovering gamer. How is that therapy going? <laughs> I've been off the games for, for a little bit. In college, I was a massive Madden player. I had all the audibles dialed in and I could go just about wherever with the ball. Growing up, I played a ton of you know Nintendo 64. I was a big like Mario Kart, Mario yeah. Party type of guy. But yeah, in the last few years, I, I haven't really been into it as much. But hey, it's it's never too late. I'm in a new city. Maybe I'll pick the habit back up. Don't. No, no. One of the things you focused on with your sales is uh, salespeople don't have time to gain unless it's with, with a customer. There's no doubt. There's Don't do it. Just wait, wait, wait till you're 50 and then try to figure out what other VR, AR systems are available at that point. You're like, I don't know. I remember I used to have two controllers. Anyway, what is your uh, deep, dark, hidden, nerdy passion? Okay, so I'm going to need, I don't know if this counts, but this is, this is what I've got. So I love hip hop, specifically the history of hip hop. And I listen to several different podcasts that break down old hip hop albums from the 90s, early 2000s era, and breaks down, you know, 
all of the lyrics from every song pretty much and like tells the story of what was going on in the world, what was going on. It's usually like uh, about a certain region, whether it's New York or LA or wherever they are and, and what that meant for the culture and the community. And I just, honest, I just can't get enough of it. So I, I pull that all day long and then we'll listen to the albums, you know, throughout afterwards from front to back, which is not a very millennial thing to do. And, and just try to kind of hear like what the story is that, that the artist is telling. I would love to hear the breakdown of the entire Two Live Crew album of... <laughs> I don't, I don't have a, a, a podcast link for that, but I think we could maybe throw that in as a suggestion. Yeah, I, I, I might throw the rating off on the channel, but if you do that, you, you brought, I wanna come back to the sales piece here a bit. So I will tell you that um, the best sales people I've seen are the ones who really do follow the process and get in it, but but it's it's okay to, you're gonna hear no a bunch. It's gonna understand why you're hearing no. And the ones who really succeed, get through the no and start leading with, the uh, objection that's about to come and they and they overcome that before the person has a, per, a chance to say no to it. And so what I would tell you know, the people is throw it in there with you is learn from the no and learn how to overcome it prior to even somebody being able to shot the set saying no by leading with what you already know they're going to be rejecting and showing like, hey, listen, I know you know you think this, but this is what it is. Five minutes of your time. And, and usually that'll be like, all right, he acknowledged that I don't want to talk to you. So I'll always talk to you now. I couldn't agree. Uh, this is a shot in the dark, Thomas. But have you ever seen the movie Eight Mile? <laughs> it's one of the first, one of the first dates I had with my wife. Yes, very much so. Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> so for folks, you know, Eight Mile is the movie, you know, loosely based on Eminem's life. And in the last rap battle sequence, I would say is maybe the best, you know, uh, identification of sales in a movie where he goes in, and usually in a rap battle, you're, you know, insulting and I make fun of your, you know, self-deprecating behavior, self-deprecating um, self right there. Yeah, he, he comes in and he handles every objection. He talks about, you know, here's all the things that you're going to say about me. And then the guy had nothing else to say. And so I think that's a, a really powerful sales move is know what the objections are going to be, handle them up front. And then, you know, all of a sudden you've got the perfect solution. Think though, if he didn't get a chance to speak first, oh boy. It, yeah, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have maybe fared too well. There, I'll tell you what. Uh, let's do a little bit of shameless plug. How do people get a hold of you? What's the podcast call? Who do you not want to go on the podcast or come listen to? And who do you want to? Just shameless plug. Drop it. Oh wait, wait. Yeah, drop I, it. Drop it in rap format. Go. <laughs> I'll have to follow up with uh, with a couple lyrics. So podcast is called Millennial Sales. You can get it wherever you listen to podcasts. YouTube channel is Tommy Tahoe. And then I post every single day on LinkedIn. My name is Tom Alamo. So connect with me there. And I'd love to hear you know what your feedback is of, of the show and any other ways I can help you out. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on today too. It's been fun. Um, I look forward to you know continually seeing your career grow. I, I have to guess you're the next Sandler system waiting to happen. You know, you're, you're uh, <laughs> go listen to that old Sandler, your old man system. Let me show you the new way millennials sell. I can see that. That's, that's impressive like, that you know Sandler. Oh, Hy Hyman Miller. I've been training all of them. I'm not. I still yeah. suck at sales. I mean, it doesn't, <laughs> I'm going to sign up for the Tommy Alamo. You don't want to be Alamo, no, go to Tom Alamo. Thank you I think I need to hire you for my as my marketing agent. <laughs> well, we we can do that. We'll talk that offline. My shameless plugs coming here right after this. Yeah.